So one example service is the main one is um, our telephony service. The voice switches are actually in the core of the network, so there's no need for a, a PBX on the site. It's managed 24-7 by our team, um, and it's based on the Broadworks platform by Broadsoft, which is a name you may not be familiar with, but if you, if you go to the, the world's largest carriers like France Telecom or Telstra or Verizon, they're all using Broadsoft. This is the, this is the world num number one hosted telephony provider. Um, in technology is also an Ofcom registered communications provider. We actually bought a, a BT business called Evoxus about three years ago. So we have all our, the telephony infrastructure and the billing platforms and the capability to support a proper PSDN service. So if you look at what a PBX costs, you have your, uh, the upfront cost. This is what most people think is what a PBX is. And then you've got the telephone lines. A telephone line will probably cost you about £5,000 a year for an ISDN 30, you know, 30 channels. You've got call charges, obviously. And you've got support and maintenance. Most IPT vendors will charge you an upgrade every two years because they will support you on the current version and the previous version, but they won't support you two versions before. And they bring out a version every year. So whether you want to upgrade or not, you have to upgrade. One of our customers bought um, a system and they, were, they came to us to ask us about a hosted telephony because they, 18 months old, they got a bill, I'm not going to say the name, for £100,000 to bring them up to the latest software version just so they could be supported. They didn't want to be upgraded. There was nothing in the software release they wanted, but they had to because they couldn't get support. And this is the, this is the thing that if you buy a PBX, they never tell you about. The big names in PBX vendors are not actually TIN providers. They're software people. They make the money on software licensing and support and maintenance. And so you always have to in, uh, include that when you're buying a phone system. With ours, that's all included in the monthly charge. So in a hosted telephony system, there's no PBX, there's just phones. And in fact, we don't even charge you for the phones anymore. It's in, all included in the, in the monthly price. The, you don't need a phone line. You just use your existing um, WAN connection. So for example, you can replace an ICN30 with one and a half meg on your MPLS network today. So that saves you immediately uh, uh, five grand a year for each ISDN you've got. There's no charges for calls between IP voice users. So all of your internal calls that are on net, they're free of charge. There's no charge for them. And there's absolutely no maintenance contracts, no nasty surprises, no upgrades, no hardware replacements, nothing. It's all included in that one fixed monthly charge. So you might look at this and go, well, actually, that, all you're saying is that monthly charge is going to be really, really high because you've got all of this cost and you're just going to lump it into one thing. It's not true. Effectively, our scale allows us to offer this service at a much lower cost than you could probably deliver it yourself because you've got individual teams, whereas we have one team that delivers to many customers. Your phones connect to your network, and then the network connects to us. This network could be in technology. It could be your own MPLS network. We would not recommend the internet by any stretch, but if you have a... a a quasi-enabled uh, WAN network, we can connect to you. And in technology, as a, as a communication provider, have our own SS7 interconnects into cable and wireless and BT. We own numbers across the UK, um, and we can port any numbers that you have onto our network without any interruption of service. And then any calls that you make internally, just go across the network, so there's no charges. It's essentially just an IP call. So from a TCO example, this is, um, this is one of our customers. They had it's typical, 180 users, it's probably similar to many, many organizations in this room. Two officers, they were paying £7,000 a year for PBX maintenance. They were paying nearly £20,000, so they had four ICNs for ICN line rental, and they had a dedicated link between the sites to reduce the car of about £11,000. So this equated to about £17.36 per user, and I would urge you to do the same maths in your head. This isn't the cost of depreciation or what the finance people think, this is just what you get month in, month out for your PBX maintenance and your lines. They had an Avaya system, Avaya Index, which is now end of life, and you know, they laughed about it, but they were keeping it going based on spare parts they bought on eBay. You know, it's not a sustainable uh, way, and they knew that. But the cost of replacing it was £250,000, and they didn't have £250,000, and I suspect many of you don't either. You know, that's a lot of capex to, to find. With our system, including the handsets, it was a per user, per month charge that varied between £7.70 and £16.10 for this. So even at the most expensive handset with the most expensive license, we were still cheaper than they were paying on their maintenance. And this is a zero capex, brand new phones, brand new maintenance, everything included. So just moving from a PBX with the, with the cost associated with the PBX to a managed service was saving the money and without having to spend anything on, uh, on handsets. And this is not some 
small, small business uh, uh, service. This is the service that we provide to companies like ADT Tyco, to Howden's, to the CBI, to Fujifilm. These are all our customers that are on this platform. And they've put us through the mill to make sure the system's up to scratch. And like for like, it does everything that a PBX does, but it also has an enormous DR capabilities because any of these numbers from the cloud can be routed anywhere. From our perspective, it's hard to see why you would buy a PBX. You know, when you consider the cost of buying a PBX, so the handsets, the PBX, the training of your staff, the line rental, the maintenance, the support, the, all that type of thing, when you add it all up, why would you bother? So in summary, from a hosted unified communications perspective, there's no hardware or software. You don't need to worry about it. Um, we keep the setup as low as we possibly can, in, including things like renting handsets. You can buy them if you want, but you know, we, uh, most customers choose to, to rent it. And it's a fixed price. There is no budget variance from, from your perspective. You can plan three, five years out. And you know exactly what you're going to be spending every year. We do all the design, installation, and maintenance. We've designed some very complex VoIP networks. That's all included as part of the charge. And the cost of running the system is kept very low because there's no need for phone lines and intersite calls are, are free. So in technology is very well positioned, very experienced to be able to help you take you down this unified communications journey, whether it's just an OCS license, whether it's uh, exchange, whether it's telephony, whether you've got a big call center, and we can provide that and manage that all from our, all from our data center. So I've kept the presentation really short because I'm curious to know what you, know, what you think and have any questions. Is there anything that on here that surprised you, any sort of questions you'd like to ask, go on. What, uh, what sort of redundancy uh, do you have if the WAN connection goes down? And also, uh, how do you handle breakages in the handsets? Okay, so the question, if anyone heard, was how do you handle uh, breakages of the WAN and what happens if the handset breaks? Well, from a WAN perspective, because it's, it's your MPLS core and all your data services run on that. Many customers choose to take a backup link, usually um, maybe a diverse routine to another provider. For, for some sites, though, that's not an economic possibility. It's just too expensive. So what they tend to do is they use a feature called Simultaneous Ring, which pairs your mobile phone with your desk phone so that when your desk phone rings, so does your mobile. So all your incoming calls are routed. And from a DR perspective, it's very powerful because it uses a completely separate infrastructure. The problem with, you, with putting in a resilient wired connection is it goes down the same ducks that BT are using going to the same exchanges. So if a digger goes through the road, you've got the same problem on your main and your standby. So using your mobile actually allows you to, to have network resilience as well as a, a service resilience. In terms of the handsets, if it's rented, we, we swap them out. If you buy them, you have a 12-month warranty and then you replace it yourself. So the question is, what solutions have you, if you've got to record voice calls? In technology, owns a call recording company. It's quite useful for us. Um, so I'm glad you asked that. It wasn't a, it wasn't a planted question. Um, it's, a, <laughs> it's a company called LivePA, and we offer call recording as part of the service. Now, it, because all of the call records are recorded in the core of the network, and in technology, another part of our business is server backup, we have five petabytes of storage in our data centers. That's five million gig. So what we do is record all of those calls onto that disk, and then you tell us how long you want to retain it for. So you could say, I want to record all calls for three years, and we'll look after it for three years. Or you could say, just for seven days. And we can record that, and we do it all on site. It's charged on a um, per user, per month, and a per minute basis. And uh, we, we can absolutely do that. And the big advantage for a multi-site organization is that you don't need a call recorder per site. It's all done in the core of the network. Any other question? So the question is, what contact center capabilities? The Broadsoft platform has what we call a mid-range call center. So it's basically anything up to about 100 agents. Is that the sort of size we're thinking of? Which allows you to, agents to have full call control through a PC application that gives supervisors visibility of queues, stats, agent performance, historical trends, wallboards, and that type of thing. And the nice thing about this is that it's on a per user basis, so you don't have to pay up front for a call center license. But also, the call center can be distributed across as many sites as you want because it's effectively in the core of the network. It's just delivering it to different handsets. So Fujifilm's a good example. They had a call center in Hemel Hempstead. They got blown up by the Bunsfield explosion, and they were out for some time. They moved over to this system because it allows them to keep answering the calls, even if the same thing happened, you know, God forbid, and they were unable to take the calls. And in fact, 
it did actually happen again, a much smaller thing, the, the, the local BT exchange got severed and every, they lost all of their traditional phone calls, but the call centre kept going.